Hi guys and welcome to Horologic. I am Olivier. I am really happy to bring you today the long-awaited comparison between the Saint Martin 39mm and the Saint Martin 36mm. And this video has been long in the making because I have been waiting for these 36mm for what appears to be an eternity. But finally it is here and I can bring you the comparison of these two watches. First of all, let me tell you, these are two quite different watches. You might expect them, by their looks, to be pretty much the same on a scale, but let me tell you, they are quite different on many, many respects. On the movement, on the looks, on the loom that's been used, price-wise, there's a difference as well. There's a $40 gap between these ones. So it is perfectly plausible to say that you want to own both. But you might also love the looks of the one and hate the looks of the other one or hope that part of the looks of the one came into part of the other ones to make some kind of mix. We will discuss about all that. Let's compare these watches right away. Let's start by the obvious, the looks, the overall looks of these watches. So, as you can see, the looks are quite different, not only by the dimensions that are different, but by the looks themselves. On the left, you can see that Saint Martin really tried to aim for the vintage look. They went with the faux patina, they went with the vintage writing, and they didn't give you any options for it. They, for the first time, went for the female end link, finally, and they went for the domed sapphire crystal so they are going fully vintage here and they are quite proud of that on the 36 millimeter side they have gone the modern way mostly with the white loom they have not done the applied indices and that is the only way in which this watch does not go for the modern references well these and the female end link but all the rest streams modern that sapphire crystal is flat, as I will show you later. That loom is white. That Saint Martin is in modern font, even though they made five dial variations of this model. And you can check my video up here, where I discuss about that. Even the crown is larger. Even the bezel is larger. I measure the width on the 36 at almost 3 millimeters. When I measure on the 39, at not even two millimeters or an over one millimeter difference on a larger watch and this gives a much different look a more compact a more modern watch look at how that log is so much thicker on the 37 millimeter and look at how it is slim on this one again the 39 going for the slimmer cases of the rolex references and the 37 going for the more modern. And let's stick with dimensions here. We are wrongly calling the 36 a 36. It is 37 millimeters in diameter by 11.4 millimeters in thickness by only 44.9 millimeters in log to log. And those female end links make for a measure of 44.3 at end link to end link. 20 at the clasp and the bracelet tapers from 20 to 16 and back up to 18.5 at the clasp. Compare those measures with the not so larger diameter of 39 millimeters by a larger thickness of 12.9, but that thickness is in big part due to that beautifully domed sapphire crystal, a log to log of 47.3, an end link to end link of 47.1, the same log width, and the bracelet tapers from the same 19 millimeters, and it slims down to 17, so a bit larger, and the clasp is the same at 18.5. Those crowns will change as well. The 36 millimeters has a 3.2 millimeter by 6.3 millimeters in diameter. That crown diameter remains the same on the 39 millimeters, but the crown is much slimmer at 2.9. That 37 millimeter diameter is very wrist friendly, as you can see. And the fact that this watch is slim makes it that it wears good on almost any wrist. But, 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 call me a always complaining Frenchman, but 
I know we craved for those female endlings, but take a look at them. They protrude a bit too much. Saint-Martin should get back to the drawing board for them to make them not protrude that much. Anyway, here you've got a roll with a beautiful clasp. Very nice. You've already seen me wear this 39. Nothing out of the ordinary and suits very well my 17 centimeter, 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist. And take a look at that beautifully domed sapphire crystal. Yes, yes, okay, but you also have a problem with those protruding links. I am at the point of almost preferring male links. All right, let me give you a roll. And let me give you a big angle. So as I was telling you in the intro, dimension-wise, this is not a scaled-down version of this one. It actually has some dimensions that are wider and that make it look different. Speaking of making it look different, let's go to that dial. Many, many differences here and some similarities as well. Let's start with the similarities. Both dials are matte. Both dials have the same basic layout and both dials use the same vintage numerals with those overhanging parts at the 6 and at the 9. Besides from that, I would say pretty much all the rest is different. First and foremost is that loom, of course. The 39 going for the vintage look with that C3 old radium loom. Compared to the very stark white of the BGW9 of the 37 millimeters. They are signed differently as well. There is only one version of the 39 with that vintage Saint Martin signature. There's actually five versions of the 37 millimeter dial, one including that vintage as well. But what they have gone for is the applied hexagon, which gives it an even more modern look, I would say. The Rolex hands remain pretty much the same, and these are actually scaled down. More differences. When you look at the bottom of the dial of the 39, you have an automatic 100 meters, nothing more. When you look at the bottom dial of the 36, you've got an automatic 100 meters equals 330 feet. And of course, we couldn't finish with the front of the watches without mentioning the sapphire crystals. I showed you on the review of the 39 the beautifully domed sapphire crystal, which was for me one of the main selling points of this one. However, on the 37, as you can see, it is totally flat. And here it will be a matter of preferences. Old radium, BGW9, let's pit them against each other. Let's see which one has the best and most long-lasting loom. Both very nice looking, quite potent. The old radium looking a bit better though from this initial burst. Let's give them a few minutes and see how they fare. Well, I had to crank up the ISO to the max after a little under 10 minutes, looking better on the 39 millimeters. The case finishes are pretty much the same, with, as we discussed, a very polished bezel on both watches, the same co-centering brushed finish on the top of the lugs, and the same polished sides of the watch. And in good R fashion, nothing at the back. Contrary to what I might have said before, the bracelets are exactly the same, same dimension, same finish, with your classical three-link construction and your vertical brushing on top. They are pretty good, high quality, of course everything is secured by screws, and the clasps are where things get good. I love these new Saint Martin clasps with their new logo that is winning a place in our hearts, finally, it took time. The Saint-Martin hexagons are very well done, and they protrude from the rest of the clasps. Another difference, NH35 here, PT5000 here, and as you can see, the PT5000 making HK watches proud, almost cost measures, beautiful amplitude, minimal bit error, High beat, really, really good, this one. I am still a bit doubtful, but that is just me. 
most people seem to have good experiences with these PT-5000s. The old NH35, maybe not as flashy, maybe not as high beats, but always so stable and reliable. Always in between the plus 8, plus 11 mark. Perfect, totally sufficient. So the big question, which one of these to buy? You will not be making your choice dimension-wise, but you will be picking looks-wise. Do you prefer the vintage? Do you prefer the modern? The basic difference is gonna go there. Do you prefer the old reliable NH35 or the more modern and high beat PT5000? If you ask me, come on, ask me, I would go for the vintage because I'm a nostalgic and because I love that domed sapphire crystal. Also, that PT5000 will set you back 40 more dollars on the 37mm or almost 200 if you decide to go for the Solita. If you have not seen my review on this one, please go ahead and do. If you would like me to review the 37mm in more depth, do let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, I wish you a very, very nice weekend, and I will be seeing you very soon. Goodbye.